chapter of Ephesians. This will be our 53rd installment. The fourth chapter, as you know, is uh, reasoning upon what's been said in the first three chapters. <laughs> in chapter one, he told us what God has done in preparation for salvation and what God has done in salvation. And chapter 2, he told us how we got involved in it. In chapter 3, he enlarges the possibilities and tells us that living for Christ involves comprehension. That God didn't save you so you'd be in an ignorant and unlearned state. And if people are, Jesus didn't do that. Had nothing to do with it. We talk about an ignorant, unlearned state of continued. One that everybody starts out that way. I mean, we understand. We're talking about the continuance in that state. Now he's reasoning on that in the fourth chapter. He's told us that God has made arrangements for the growth of his people in apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastor teachers. I know some people talk about the five-fold ministry, but they, they don't know what they're talking about. In English or any other way, the pastor teachers is a one, one ministry with two sides. Even in English, the others are separated by a comma. This, that isn't. So as pastor and teachers are people who care for the flock and feed them. That's one office. The apostles, we have them with us. There's no new apostles. Let's be clear about this. I understand that Barnabas is called an apostle. He was sent by the Holy Spirit for on a special mission. And there, but the the 12 apostles and Paul, the, every single foundational truth is revealed through them. Amen. Now there's some uninspired write, not uh, non-apostolic writers in scripture. You have Luke. He wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Acts. You have James. He wrote the book of James. George the Lord's half-brother. You have Jude, another half-brother. Neither of those men, all of what they said was inspired. But not one of those three men introduced a new thought about Christ. Not one of those persons introduced a new thought about spiritual life. Not one. If you want the foundation matters, you get it from the apostles or you don't get it. That's why the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, that's these Old Testament prophets that foretold what was coming. So when Jesus came here, people knew who he was. I know you already know it, but a lot of church people don't know who Jesus is. They don't have any idea what the prophets said. So they just, they've heard about a Jesus, but whether it's the real Jesus or not is open to question. Prophets? These are men who are inspired, they're put in the church. These are all put in the church. Acts 4.12, the prophets are inspired men that can put it together. They can properly interpret, so to speak, the truth and expound it fully. Evangelists, these are given to the church now, even evangelists. The, the, the evangelists are those who announce or proclaim the gospel and they can show the relevance of the gospel to anything. Whatever you're talking about, however deep you may think it is, the gospel is one of the cornerstones of it. Pastors and teachers are people who have an ongoing interest in the people of God. See, um, a lot of church leaders are not interested in the people of God. They're interested in a career, some of them are interested in money, whatever. But real pastor teachers have a care for the people of God and would see to it that they're fed. All right, now, Paul's reasoning on the basis of this, what comes from this. All this is designed to produce mature Christians. 
All of this is designed to make you so you're no longer children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness lie in wait to deceive. See, everybody's got to grow out of the inability to understand and make a distinction between what's being said. If they can't, they'll be led astray. God protects you when you first come in for a while, gives you some time to kind of get your feet on the ground. But you got to grow up. You have to come to the point where you can say, that's true, that's not. you got to come to the point where you can distinguish it. Now he's reasoning on that basis. Now he's going to enlarge on it some more tonight. We're in verse 20 and 21. <coughs> but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Oh, that, that is a weighty statement. All I can give you is what I can see. That's, that's all I can give you on it, but there's quite a bit. Let's look at this word, but. Some versions don't have it. But it's there. Some versions read, you, however, they just start out that way. Basic Bible says for, that instead of but. The New Jerusalem Bible says now, comma. Young's literal translation says and, comma. Well, what, what does that mean? Well, the word but is a proper translation. We'll not go into the derivation of the word, but I, I'm, I'm capable of doing that. This is a form of spiritual reasoning. We're being exposed to kingdom logic here. If you want the technical meaning of but, here it is. Universally, by way of opposition and distinction, it is added to a statement opposed to preceding statements. So but means we're shifting from what was just said to something else that can't blend with that. All right, so let's read what he said before. That can't blend with it. This is verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that sent them because of the blindness of heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But... That is in comparison to that. Amen. That's not what we are. Amen. By we, I mean we that are in Christ, not, not us here at 406 South Sergeant. We that are in Christ aren't like that. But there are churches that do have people like that. It's the earth matter. So Paul's going to say, but... Whoever does those things doesn't have Christ, and it doesn't make any difference what they say. We will not listen to them. But, see, it's a king. This is the way the Holy Spirit teaches. Sometimes there's truths said that aren't compared with anything else. Jesus is the Son of God. Right? That's not compared with anything else. That's just a pillar stands by itself. You don't learn it by comparing it with something because there's nothing that high to compare it with. There's that kind of statement made. But when it comes to other statements, he'll make a, he'll teach you what the, what the thing's like by comparing it with something. Now let me give you some, some examples of this. <laughs> well, I'll just say it from memory. I can't put my finger on it right now. You were sometimes, you were dead in trespasses and sins, but now you are quickened. Yeah. See that difference? Amen. Yeah. Walk as children of light, not as children of darkness. Uh -huh. It's a comparison between those two. We're saved by hope, but hope that seems not hope. See? Yeah. Amen. He compares. 
There are those who we walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. See there it again. This comparison. We do not serve in oldness of letter, but newness of spirit. See there it is. There's some truth. This is how he opens it up. He's compared. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. The point of such comparisons like this is to show that there are two conditions that cannot be blended. There are two conditions that cannot exist in a person simultaneously. Now I will tell you a lot of teaching ignores this. So we've got people talk about carnal Christians. Hmm? That's not in the Bible. In the scriptures you're either carnal or you're spiritual. But what, why do they use the word carnal Christians? Because they are operating under the imagination that the flesh and the spirit can be joined and they can't. It's a misnomer. Or you hear someone say, I love God with all my heart, but I, my life is out of control. This is impossible. You can't love God with all your heart without God kicking in some power that keeps you from con losing control of your life. So this con these conditions don't exist, but people are taught they do. And so when they find something in their life they know God doesn't approve of, they just kind of brush it aside and say God understands. No, God doesn't understand. Well, he does understand, but it's not, the, not that way. <laughs> Not that way. As simplistic as it may seem, there is a considerable amount of ignorance among professed Christians on this very subject. But Paul, an apostle, he's going to open this thing up to us. You have not so learned. It is... You know, the world talks about learned behavior. Yeah, well, in a sense it's true, but wicked people have bad hearts. They got corrupt minds. They're walking in darkness. They're controlled by the devil. They're spiritually dead. But Jesus didn't produce that. Don't you dare identify those things with the Christian in any sense, in any accommodating sense or apologetic sense. You have not so learned. Now some of the different versions, they managed to botch this up quite a bit. You did not learn Christ this way. That's pretty good. You did not come to know Christ that way. This was not the teaching of Christ that was given to you. This is not the lesson you learned from the Messiah. That is not what you learned from Christ's teachings. That isn't the way Christ taught you. That's good. And that and and you and that you learned about Christ, which in several versions say that. You have not so learned, our texts say Christ. You have not so learned Christ. Not, not, you have not so learned about Christ. That's not what it says. And that's not what it means. It doesn't mean you heard about Christ's teachings. That's not what it means. You look, Christ is what's learned. You see that? Some people learn biology, some people learn mathematics, see, some people learn physics. We learn Christ. That's a fulfillment of Christ's own words. You learn Christ. Not about Christ, Christ. That means you'll be able to recognize him. Here's what Jesus said, John 14. 21, he that hath my commandments, that means they're in your grasp. 
He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, doesn't let him, let him go. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father. Well, there goes unconditional love. That, pfft, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> so much for that. It's a condition, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let me read that again. Make sure that it's a condition. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And, and I will love him. And will manifest myself to him. I, that's learning Christ. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't say, I'll tell him some new things. He'll show himself. Yes. You know, when he rose from the dead, he had to show himself yes. to the disciples. <laughs> it was him that they saw. Yes. Amen. And after they saw him and they knew it was him, then he told them some things. Yes. So that's what learning Christ. Well, it's, it's, it's a profound thing. Yes, Brother Matt. That's also what he defined as being eternal life in John 17. That's right. Knowing God and Jesus. Christ. That's right. And Jesus Christ. Learn Christ. That's an intriguing expression, isn't it? You can see how some of the some of the versions, I don't know they if they park their brain or what, but there's no way you can get that out of the out of the original language. You, you, they, that's an interpretation. That's what they thought it meant. See, that's the trouble with a lot of these versions of scripture, is the people translated, they've imposed on it their understanding. And we, I try and point it out quite frequently how much variation there is in them. They are not at all agreed. Yeah. And the ones that have human understanding imposed upon them are not Bibles. Yeah, that's right. Right. They're commentaries. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus said this. He said, you've made null and void the word of God by your tradition. As soon, It was religious tradition. Uh -huh. It was their understanding of the Bible that they had. But as soon as they impose their, they mix the tradition with the Bible, it stopped being the scripture. Uh -huh. Wasn't God's word anymore. So you have not so learned Christ. Which means, if a person is living with the traits we read about, they haven't learned Christ. They may know a lot of things about Christ. Yeah. Ah, they may be able to quote a lot of information from the scriptures about Christ. But if that stuff's in them, they haven't learned Christ. Now they can get provision in Christ. That's what the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, that's who they're for. Is so you can learn Christ. Why did he say Christ? Why didn't he say learn Jesus? Why didn't he say that? Or learn the Lord? Why didn't he say that? Why did he say learn Christ? Jesus is the name of the Savior, in flesh Savior. Christ is his office. That is, he's the one. Uh, it does mean anointed one, but some people, they, they talk so much about anointed, they forget to tell the people what it really means. Anointed, the anointed means this is the one and only person of whom God approves. Amen. You want to be approved by God? You have to get in Christ. There's no way. No, there's no way. Now since he's been exalted, sit at the right hand of God. He's the one that's appoint, the appointed administrator of truth. He distributes truth. You want truth? You get it from Jesus or you don't get it. God has made him both Lord and Christ. Right. God did that. See, the prophets gave us the concept of Christ, right? The one that was coming. There was going to be a man should be for a covert. A man will be a righteous branch. A man will be given the kingdom and will reign. <laughs> that was the Christ. This is what Jesus, the Christ is what Jesus came to do. He's the administrator of the kingdom of God. Nothing happens that has to do with God that is not governed, strictly governed by Jesus. You say, oh, oh, go ahead, Brother Tony. No, no. Go ahead. Christ has significant meaning, that name Christ, because this is the one that God said was going to come That's right. and do these things. This is God's man, in other words. His, his role of Christ, he became Christ when he became a man. He was appointed to be Christ before the foundation of the world. 
but he became the, see, God is saving men by a man. Since by man he fell, Romans 5 says, by man he's brought back. You want to give something to God, it's got to go through Christ. You want to get something from God, it has to come through Christ. So do the Muslims and the Christians worship the same God? No. No, they do not. We worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They worship the God of Abraham and Ishmael. It's not the same God. And you want to get further defined, we worship the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's, Amen. that's the real God. And the real God sent the real Christ. Amen. And everything, go ahead, Brother Gene. The, the, the prophet did say, a child shall be born to us, right. a son shall be that's given right. to us. That's, right. that's exactly the words that the high priest asked him. Are you the son of the blessed? That's right. Mm -hmm. He confessed yeah. that he was and they condemned him to death. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's the one. And the one, the one that God sent to administrate, the one that God sent to bless, the one that God sent to save, the one that God sent to reveal, the one that God sent to bless, he did not produce the conditions revealed in verses 17 through 19. That's not, the, that's not Christ. So you can just dispense with trying... <laughs> To understand why people do this immorality, we're talking about outward immorality particularly. You don't have to try and figure out are they saved, or are they lost, what they're this of the devil is that cut and dried. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's a remedy, thank God there's a remedy for it, but it does have to be accepted. Amen. You have not so learned Christ, but he doesn't leave the matter there. Someone have something? He doesn't leave the matter there. He's going to enlarge upon it. You have not so learned Christ if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him. So Paul doesn't take for granted that the Ephesians have learned Christ. He doesn't diagnose them and give his assessment of whether they have learned Christ or whether they have not. Huh? He's going to cast this thing in their lap. He's going to tell them what really happens when a person comes to Christ and is born again, and then the person's got to discern whether did that happen to me. Am I, do I bear fruit to God? Does, is God glorified through me? See, this is the apostolic way. He probably did have, there were some times when they'd know, like Peter said to Simon, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. You're a son of, you're a child of the devil. See, there were some people so bad, you just know who they are. If so be. <clears throat> it's a condition. Yes. This is an excellent wisdom to have to share with Paul in ministry. Mm. Because Amen. we may not be able to specifically touch circumstances of people or brethren but if we proclaim the truth, That's right. then the truth then ministers That's in right. whatever Amen. situation is at hand. The wow. truth makes you free. You Amen. shall know the truth. <laughs> yes, that's very good. Amen. This will require some discipline, personal discipline, because when you're living in a period where, the falling, where there's a tremendous falling away and it's hard to find someone that fits the description of who's born again, it's more easy to be overly critical. So we're not, in, we're not trying to encourage that kind of spirit, but everybody is obligated to find out about themselves, and if they don't know, they've got to make it their business to know, and they can't do that by ignoring Christ and spending part-time with God and half of their life spent for something else They'll never learn Christ. If so be. Now the versions again do a handy job of butchering this. <coughs> the NIV version says, surely. Well, that, seems, <laughs> that seems to compete with if. Mm -hmm, that's right. If is indicating it's not sure yet uh -huh. in, the, in the comprehension. 
The New Revised Standard Version says, assuming. This is how it reads. Assuming. No, Paul's not assuming. He stepped back from assuming. He's telling him, here's what you have to look for. Oh, that's all that version I'm going to give you. If so be that you have heard him. Now here again, the NIV says, heard of him. There you are. The New Revised Standard Version says, heard about him. The good God's Word Bible says, heard his message. If the word here carries the idea, but here the word here carries the idea of comprehension. It's not just like the sound. In, in Hebrews 10, 14, he says, How shall they hear without a preacher? And before that, he said, Have they not all heard? So the, their sound, he said, went out into all the world. But hearing here has to do with comprehending. You're picking up on what was said. And faith comes by hearing and hearing comes mm -hmm. by the word yeah. not he's not talking about this word yeah, that's right. <laughs> you gotta, it does you do have to have the but it's not what he's talking about the word, your faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. but as Psalms said the hearing ear God made it Amen. Moses told Israel God hadn't given you ears to hear yeah. But he has those in Christ. He has given ears to hear. Yes. If so be that you have heard him. Jesus one time said as he is ministering, Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Uh -huh. Well, they were, <laughs> they were there. Uh -huh. it, the sound of it came to them, but they didn't in this sense hear. It didn't sink down into their ears, as Jesus would say. Yes. Yeah. You can see how God is in, in setting Christ at His own right hand. He hasn't just made an office, you know, just as perfunctory. This, he is involved in every person that believes, That's right. every person Amen. that hears. He's personally worked in them for this to happen. Amen. Now, some versions lead the impression that this is hearing about Jesus. <clears throat> He's not saying, for instance, if you have heard the gospel. That's what, that's what, that was what that would mean. Paul himself knew they'd heard the gospel. He'd been three years. He ceased not to warn them day and night for three years. That's found in Acts 20, verse 13. He knew that they'd heard with the hearing of this ear. So it wasn't if you heard the gospel. You know, they, he knew they had. In fact, when he first went to Ephesus... He didn't find any Christians there. He did find some followers of John the Baptist. But he didn't find any believers in Christ there. So this is not talking about you heard about Christ or you heard the gospel preached. That's not what he's talking about. He's speaking about Jesus himself. The literal rendering of the text, for what it's worth, is, If surely him ye hear. Him. So it's not referring to them hearing about Jesus during his earthly ministry. Because I said there's no evidence. We know Unless they were there at Pentecost, and there's no indication that they were, Jesus didn't go in that area of the world. So it refers to him manifesting himself within. Yes. Now, Jesus may have talked to you a lot of times but you were at such a distance you didn't know it. We hope this isn't the case, but this, this can happen. If Jesus is a good shepherd and he's leading and feeding his people, and as the prophet said, you hear a voice behind you and saying, this is the way, walk you in it, go to the right, go to the left, if that's true, then Jesus communicates with those in whom he dwells. Amen. It's not something I can't hear Jesus talking to Brother Tony. I can't. I can't I'm only given the ability to, to pick up on that he's ministering to me, yes. saying something to me. He may say, up, 
Beware. Yeah. He said that during his earthly ministry. He may say that to, or he may say, do it now. Mm -hmm. He may say that. <laughs> he may, it is time to seek the Lord now. You, you've tried to figure this out long enough. Or he may open up to you suddenly some fresh aspect of God, how he's in and through and everything. He may, he may show it to you. If so be, you have heard, heard him and been taught by him. That, that's good, isn't it? Again, some versions say taught in him, taught about him, taught his ways. Some versions put it pretty well, in union with him have been taught. So that's, that's pretty good. He, he not, you have heard him by faith. See, this is, the, this is the, what Galatians 3 calls the hearing of faith. Galatians 3 verses 2 through 5. The hearing of faith. If you've heard Jesus... Verses 17 to 19, it not, does not describe you. If so be that you have heard him and been taught by him. Now Jesus, he, during his earthly ministry, he, he kind of gave us a hint at what this was going to happen. Now this is Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27. He says, all things that are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And, and, he to whomsoever the Son will, wills, as I do, wills to reveal him. Amen. Amen. And he says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants to learn from me. Huh? <laughs> that's, the, that's the hearing that he, and instruction he's talking about here. No matter who the man is, the apostles themselves had limited knowledge. They were given to see everything men needed to see about Christ, but they had limited knowledge. Only Jesus has thorough. Amen. Well, you got to see this. This is the, this is the truth. But Paul said in the peak of his apostleship, he's still talking about that I might know him and be found in him. I have not apprehended that for which I was apprehended. He confesses to you. There's a lot more in what I see. There's a lot more to be seen than that. <laughs> so no matter who, uh, who the man is, there's more to be seen of God, and Jesus is the only person that can do it. It's quite true, I think. I, I wouldn't uh, want to spend a lot of time on this, but I think some people have been taught about the wrong God. I don't think the God they believe in is the real God. John wrote, remember now, he's talking about, if so be, you have heard him and been taught by him. So here's John's word on the subject. We know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true <clears throat> and we are in him that is true even in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. The next verse says, little children, keep yourself from idols. What do you mean? He wasn't talking about the idol of Zeus. That's not what he's talking about. Keep yourself, an idol in this case is a God Jesus didn't teach about. It's a God Jesus didn't reveal. And he's come. So if you've heard him, Paul says if you've heard him, then uh, you're not in that category that I mentioned. You've heard him as the truth, as the truth is in Jesus. This whole passage is very intriguing to me. This so in manner in which it's stated and everything. It challenges your mind. You know, some people have lazy minds. They just listen to modern music and watch the TV, and they, their minds are lazy and incapable of really laying hold of things. But they don't have to be that way. 
the truth. That you might taught by Jesus as the truth. Singular, truth. You know the word truths isn't in the Bible. It's got the NIV. It has it four times. But it's truth. It is not in the singular. As I mentioned, I give you the text here. The NIV has it four times. Truths. I gave you the text, the first text, where it says truths. The actual, the word for truth isn't used there at all. What it means is spirituals or spiritual things. The second text, 1 Timothy 3, 9, truths is used, but the proper translation is mystery of the faith. <laughs> In the third text, 1 Timothy 4, 6, reads words of faith. The fourth text, Hebrews 5, 20, 5, 12, is accurately translated principles. Truths. Now, what's improper about that? Because this presents an idea that is erroneous. There aren't, in God's kingdom, there are not truths. Truth is singular, always. The idea is that truth is like an intellectual cosmos. There's a whole world of realities that are interrelated. Truth. And whoever speaks truth gives some facet of that, some aspect. It gets something from that domain and bring it down here. See? Truths. The scriptures are use the expression the truth 87 times. The truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. That's right. Amen. So in other words, all kingdom reality, it means things that are spiritually real, are compressed into Christ. So if, you, if Christ dwells in your heart by faith, you've got access to everything that you can have access to. It's all embodied in Christ. But he communicates it to you by teaching, <laughs> not feeling. Not feeling. That's the weakest part of your constitution is your feeling. So that God would indicate his blessing that he approves of you by giving you a special feeling this is the peak of absurdity. After he tells you don't trust in the scene and don't trust in the flesh, he confirms his blessing in the flesh? Well, people should be able to figure it out. Jesus, when praying to the Father about his disciples, in John 17, 17, he says, Sanctify them through thy truth. In for the sake of his disciples that are hearing, he says, Thy word is truth. So in other words, the word takes these realities, you might call these realities all things pertaining to life and godliness, that would be, and it brings them down so you can uh, grasp them what we call cognitively or with your understanding. If you were to see, well, you can't with these I see like, grace or love or <laughs> omnipotence <laughs> or peace you can't see you don't have a natural faculty that can get hold of this so what God does he makes you a new creation he gives you a new mind hmm, and a new heart and then he takes words and he communicates to you the truth of these realities because you're not about to seek something you don't understand God made us this way. You're not going to be inconvenienced for something you figure you're not going to be able to discern. But that's, that's what the word is called the word of truth. And words, presentation and words of the realities. See, in the kingdom of God, he talks about... Uh, the kingdom of God is not in word, 1 Corinthians 4.20, is not in word, but in power. 
All right, now this is what he's talking about. It's not in human, humanly derived words. It's in power. It takes Christ to show you by teaching within what grace is, what truth is, what sacrifice is, what living for God is, what Savior means, what knowledge means, what fellowship means. See, you learn. Christ teaches these things. Now the scriptures do speak about use truth in a singular sense as applying to something in particular. Psalm 169.13 says, it was 69.13, the truth of thy salvation. Well this like isn't a separate truth over here. Psalm 117 verse 2 says, The truth of the Lord, or the truth of God, Romans 3, 7, or the truth of the gospel, Galatians 2, 5. But what that is, that's a segment of this great the truth. That's a facet of it. Like he spins the globe and shows you. You've got a globe of the world. You can't see a whole globe at one time, can you? Some people think you're in a horizontal globe, and you can see the whole thing, but you go around it, you got to... That's how truth is. If you, if you, God will turn the globe of truth, so to speak, until you can see the thing that you need to see to keep separate from that other group we mentioned and grow up in Christ Jesus. Yes. That's, what the, that's the sense in which truth is used here. So the inability to, of men to understand Scripture, <coughs> excluding the fact that they are a novice or a beginner, they're given grace to their condition, but they're told to grow out of it. A person who doesn't understand the Scripture has not seen the whole <laughs> of the matter. That's what the trouble is. So invariably, people try and show them this. They try and take a facet of it and show that to them. No. This is not the secret to understanding. you got to get the whole picture. Once you see the whole picture, let's be take a bad sin, fornication. Once you see the whole picture, fornication becomes absurd. But if you focus on morality, you just hammer away on this, see, you, you will not get the job done. A person has to see, let's say, division. People think nothing about the church being divided. That's why it can't do anything. <laughs> There's 160 churches in our town. 160. They couldn't close one porn shop. Why? Because they're divided. They're dealing with one, some little segment of the whole. The truth. As it is in Jesus. Now he qualifies it a little bit, a little further. Jesus said, I am the truth. In the human body. Which for anybody else would be a restriction. If for anybody else, being in a body is a restriction. And it was from the, when the, it was for Jesus too when it comes to suffering and things like this. How I am straight until it be accomplished. He still got a body. It's a glorified body, but it's not, he's not restricted in his glorified body. You won't be either when you get your glorified body. See? In Jesus, the glorified, this is the glorified Jesus. The law, see, ex nature exposed men to some of God. T took a little piece of the, his power and Godhead or divinity. Nature showed you that. The law, it showed you some of God. Like from the moral side, right and wrong, showed you God from that standpoint. But now Jesus, <laughs> working with the message of the gospel, he shows you the whole of God. And you will learn, I've been an ardent, zealous follower of God, for 61 years. I've never one time let up, never one time backslid since that just started. 
and I'm still marveled at how little I know. It's remarkable. Not a, and every single day of every single year during that prayer, I spent some time with God and in the Scripture. And since I've been retired, every hour, waking hour of every day, I spend in the Word and with God. I'm able to do it because I used my time wisely when I was occupied with a job that required a lot of my time. But I have by no means am satisfied with what I know. If I was, I think Jesus would leave. What reason would there be for Jesus to, to stay and abide in you if you knew everything? Well, what need? If so, be the truth as it is in Jesus. It's a lifetime thing Amen. into eternity as well. See, he is the light that illuminates this vast cosmos of truth. And the focus of his teaching is what's in him, not what's in you. Sometimes you do have to deal with what's in people. You, I understand that. But that's never the focus. The focus is not correct people. The focus has got to be Christ because he's the one that corrects people. Jesus is not given to be our assistant or enabler. <laughs> That's not why he's been given to us. He's been given to us to teach us because people, God's not letting ignorant people into heaven. He tells you right in the scripture. He's going to come in, Jesus is going to come in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. See? Jesus knows that. He's performing his present ministry in view of the fact he knows there's not going to be any anybody get to heaven who left earth in a state of ignorance unless it's like infants or people deprived of a right mind. We, we understand that. We're, we're talking about people that came and made a profession of faith and were old enough to obey the gospel. We're talking about those kind of people. Jesus knows if they do not, do not grow up Satan will pull them off the path. He knows that. So what does he do? There's been full provision made for that not to occur. You've got the ministry, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to give you kind of the whole of the matter. Then Jesus dwells within to open it up. And then the Holy Spirit, he's there too. He's even making intercession for you because you need things you don't know you need. So the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you Amen. in those matters. And then he, it's through his direction you mortify the deeds of the body. And See, so all the provision has been made to grow up. So how can, how can you really explain people not growing up? There isn't, we don't, want to, we don't want any explanation for it. We want to make this known. That look, everything about salvation is calculated to cause you to grow up into Christ in all things. And if that's not what's happening, you've got to identify why it isn't. Is it because you're not being provoked enough by edification and this sort of thing? Is it because you're giving too, too minimal, you're giving a minimal amount of time to the Lord? You've got to find this out. That's the if that you've got to find out. And when you see the truth as it is and you submit yourself to it, Christ goes to work. <laughs> and you won't be in that category you'll be in this other category and now in the next uh, few verses we're going to take next time we meet he's going to tell you what Jesus teaches you to do hmm? he's going to tell you what Jesus teaches you to do and it's some potent stuff and it's liberating when you see it it's put, on the old, put off the old man put on the new man he didn't say, you've got an old man, you got a new man. That's not how it's stated. Huh? We've got some people that still, they still say it that way because it's kind of new to them. So we've got an old man and a new man. That's not the way to say it. We say, we put off the old man, we put on the new man. They take for granted, you got them both. I mean, I understand that. But just the fact that you have them, that's not, it's not sufficient just to know that. 
Jesus is going to effect, teach you, shall I say effectively, yes. teach you to put off one and put on the other. Amen. And Amen. if you could make somebody do that, wouldn't that simplify your ministry? <laughs> if you could effectively talk a person into putting off and putting on, but, well, we know by experience. <laughs> We all have got, we've all got stories that we could tell you. We couldn't do it. We wanted to do it. We tried to do it. But Jesus can do it. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, I think I'll close there. But this thing really got my spirit fired up, you know, to see how thorough salvation is. God has blocked every door that needs to be blocked. And he's opened every one that needs to be opened. This is marvelous to know. Now it just becomes a matter of me pursuing it and identifying, finding it's there. What you need is it exists already. You don't have to make it. It already exists. And here you've got a teacher that'll open it up to you. So all the provisions there. That's why. You want to stay close to Christ. When I say stay close to Christ, I mean remain aware of Him. So you're not doing anything that allows you to forget see Christ. All right, I'll, I'll close there. Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? This text fits very well with Paul's uh, word to the Colossians when he says, As you have received the yeah. Lord Jesus well, Christ. So walk ye walk in. Him. Him. See, it's okay. the same in the spirit as it is in nature. You have to grow where you are planted. Very yes. good. Uh -huh. Very good. Amen. Amen. Anyone else tonight? It's a matter of people worshiping a different God. Yeah. Even Moses. But the Lord warned Moses. Yeah. You shall have no, no other, other God. God. That's Lord. right. Yeah. That's right. We well, like have to let the book else in the dark about that. Yeah, right. As there be God's many and Lord's many, that's the world's mentality. But to us, but to us that have been taught by Christ, there is one. Yes. Yeah. Now, how foolish it is to try to attempt to build some other system or some other whatever you want to call it that would attempt to do what Christ that's is right, that's doing right. here. And, 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 and promise we can change your character. We can do this. We can, when Christ, God's already set yeah. someone at his own right hand who has the ability to do those Amen. things. Amen. Well, yeah. that's good to know. Yes. I was thinking when you said Christ himself has learned. You don't learn about Christ. You don't stare at food. Put food on the table and stare at it. That doesn't give you the nutrition that's in it. Yeah, that's you take it into yourself, and when you take it into yourself, at that point, that's when it benefits you. Amen. Yeah, you could have uh, well, someone invited you over for supper, and there's a little card by your plate that does that describe the nutritional value of. I suppose I showed you a little picture of it, you know, and showed you the nutritional value, but there wasn't any food. It was just, you know, a lot of sermons are like that. You like to put a little tag out there. I used to tell the kids, if you put a carrot in your ear, you think it'd grow. <laughs> That's not the right soil. You got to, you have to ingest the carrot if you want its nutritional value. <laughs> and when you see, and when you ingest the word and you keep the word, it means you keep hold of it. Then Jesus has gone on record. Yes. I will come in and I will manifest myself Amen. to him. Yes, yes Brother Tony. This matter of growing up into Christ and growing in Christ, I'm amazed about how this takes place as, uh, as we learn. Christ. Yeah, yeah. As we learn, so we, so our emphasis is not so much on, you know, growing in Christ. I must grow in Christ, which you know that is true. Yeah. But, but our emphasis then, if we're is placed on learning Christ, yes, well, abiding in it. Christ, walking it. with Christ in the Spirit, then you see growth as a comes by way of that. Yeah, you can like, grow, grow, grow. You know, but that isn't that isn't the way. <laughs> Learn, learn, learn. <laughs> a living thing. That's you know, right. You know, Amen. Uh, Amen. A rote now you commandment. See, if, 
if Jesus himself is not the core of preaching and teaching, you can see you you cut off the people from the from the source. You may think you're talking about the right thing, about marriage and finances and health. And, uh, you're, that's the thing you're focused on. But see, the, no resources are found in that emphasis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Again, this is also an excellent explanation of Jesus' words when he said, My sheep hear my voice, yeah. mm -hmm. and I know them, and they follow me, mm -hmm. and I give unto them eternal life. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, so Jesus dispenses life through his word. Right. So you you flourish in the hearing. Yeah. It's Christ's a high voice. view there, you read. But if you're following Jesus, that means you're a sheep. <laughs> yeah. That's right. yeah. All right, we'll have a closing word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father. We're grateful for the thorough provision of Christ. And we ask for grace to learn Him, to be more, more thoroughly familiar with Him, to fellowship with Him, and to grow into a circumstance where we are able to recognize His presence and invite Him in. In Jesus' name, amen.